I've been serving in the church since I was 12 years old. I'm from Truman, Arkansas, a little one-stop light town next to Jonesboro, Arkansas. Maybe you've heard of that. And um, my grandmother paid for my mother's first three children to take piano lessons, and I was the best of the three. So at 12 years old, I was asked to be the organist of the church because they needed an organist. And I was a very serious 12-year-old, and I took it very seriously, and I started taking organ lessons. And after one year, I was on the official board at 13 years old. Forty-some odd years later, my mother died last year. I went back to that home church, took my six grandchildren there with me, and uh, one of my little granddaughters sat up on that organ bench with me and saw the organ that I played for all the weddings, all the funerals, have a charm bracelet to prove it. That's how you got paid was the, the charms on your charm bracelet. And really that launched me into being a lifelong Methodist and all of my six siblings are too, as well as their spouses. Yeah, I remember when I very first started out, my very, very first appointment, I was so anxious for, I was a student at Perkins, I was anxious to get an appointment. I bugged my superintendent. Uh, and, and so like the Wednesday before the Sunday, the things were supposed to, he, he calls me that Wednesday and says, well, we have a church for you. Oh, I was so excited. And I said, well, like, how will they know that I'm, I'm the pastor? And he says, well, you know, you put on your tie, you grab your Bible and you show up. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I've always thought about, it. well, that was some, probably some of the best advice I got in my entire ministry. You know, put in your tie, grab your Bible, show up. They'll know, they'll know there was 20 folks in the, in the congregation. It was, a, uh, it was in Sadler, Texas, you know, and they were so gracious. You know, they, I didn't know anything. And uh, they were so kind to me along the way. But, but you know, every appointment uh, that I've served is its own unique gift. Uh, there's been in each one of them, there's a relationship that you share with them as a pastor um, where, where God is active within the context of the chapter that you write together. And that uh, to me has always been such a, such a blessing. The one person who's been there and has been God's greatest blessing for me is, um, is my spouse, Julie and uh, she has just stood with me through everything. All, all the itineracy, you know, when they ask you the question, will you itinerate? Uh, that includes the spouse and, uh, and the family in our case. And uh, I was the one who answered yes, but they were the ones who, <laughs> who went also. Uh, and uh, I am grateful to her for just being such, she is such a gift of God to me. I'm so thankful for her. I grew up in the Northeast in a community that was on the shoreline and um, it was a place where the the fresh water ran into the salt water and they call it an, an estuary um, and it, an estuary that's a, it's an ecosystem that just thrives with the vitality of life it's just very it's very unique uh, in terms of what happens in there um, and you know, when I was coming along, uh, they used to sing the song, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, you know. Uh, and I thought, well, that really ought to be, Lord, prepare me to be an estuary. <laughs> because really it's where, it's in the coming together of where, you know, the people of the word meet the people of the world, where, they, where the people who have a heart um, uh, for Christ and the heart of Christ, that love of Christ, um, are with um, folks who are, we're all God's children, you know, <laughs> whether we're in the church or not, we are all God's children. God's at work in the middle of, of all things. The most important thing is to listen to the needs first, uh, not make any assumptions of what is needed and to listen to people. What you did last year, it may change and you need to revisit what is now needed differently in ministry. I know one year at Caldwell Elementary School, our partner school, we had been giving new clothes at the beginning of school year and communities and schools had to be honest with me. And she says, well, really people can get inexpensive clothes now or, or hand-me-down clothes and that's not the focus. School supplies have gotten so expensive and, and socks and underwear are far more important. And if she hadn't told me that, we would have kept giving clothes and that would have not truly meet the need and have done the wrong thing.
students. I went to a seminar um, and uh, they were talking about the church and kind of what the church is going through and they had young pastors up there and they talked about the future. And when I saw that, I thought, praise God. <laughs> You know, there are, there, are, there are people who are talking about the future and talking about the future with hope. And, and so I took hope from that. Uh, that, you know, golly, there's, there are folks who have a heart uh, for what's out ahead and, and what a blessing that is. It's oftentimes in life, you would think that the really tough things, the disasters in life, um, wouldn't be where you find hope, but we are people of the resurrection and really that's where you find hope and really the intersection between despair and hope is where you find meaning in life. I had been putting flood buckets together for many years for our UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief, and uh, knew that they were going to the UMCOR depot in, in Baldwin, Louisiana, serving in Louisiana Conference. Uh, but when Katrina hit, and I evacuated, and they let pastors back in before anybody, sitting in the church hallway, in the dark, even before we got together for our first worship service, floor to ceiling and the hallway as far as you could see were stacked UMCOR flood buckets. They even beat me there. I sat in the floor and I cried. It was more than the gloves and the sponges and the things that were in the bucket. And so it took on this whole new meaning of hope. And when you survive something terrible, for someone to offer you hope. And it really gave me a new sense of ministry. I will say in the tough times in life, I've lived long enough as a retiree, that I want people to hear the story, we are a people of hope. And that flood bucket and our connectionalism as United Methodists, offering hope to people is such an important thing.